Jesus. Do you get organic? So, today for Organic Friday, guys, we are going to be talking about ether. We are talking about ether. So, we are going to go on and talk about ether today for our first Organic Friday. And ethers are a class of organic compounds that are relatively unreactive, right, compared to a lot of the other organic compounds. They don't do a whole lot. Now, I've got a picture here of a type of ether called a crown ether, right, and you can notice it's got a, a ring structure, right, and this particular molecule actually has multiple ether linkages. Right. Now, what I really want you to understand about ethers is their basic pattern, all right? The basic pattern for ethers <coughs> is that you have some carbon-containing group connected to an oxygen connected to some other carbon-containing group. And the two carbon-containing groups may or may not be the same, all right? So I called one R, because that's the normal um, notation, and I called the other one R prime, because they don't have to be the same. Right, but they're different carbon-containing groups. And I've got another picture over here of another crown ether. All right, so it's quite, it's quite a bit more complicated, but it's kind of cool. All right, and that's the basic ether linkage. And I just want you to recognize that. All right, that's our emphasis with with Organic Friday, just exposing you to some of these different functional groups, so that if you should encounter them, you know, in a drawing, you can look at it and say, oh, that's an ether linkage. All right. Um, organic chemistry per se at this level isn't tested on the or get the AP exam, but knowing it can be beneficial to you. So we'll just do a little bit at a time so you don't get overwhelmed with all the different functional groups. All right. So here is another ether. We name them as alkoxy derivatives of alkanes. Right. So we have R and R prime. All right. And what we're going to do is take this section and call it that number of carbons plus this, the ending oxy, and then the rest of it is named as an alkane. Right. So we've got one carbon on the left here. One carbon has the prefix meth in the name, right? so it becomes methoxy. And then I have one carbon on the other side, so it's methoxy methane. And here's a space filling picture of methoxy methane. Now, there's another naming system for the ethers. Um, sometimes you'll see this called dimethyl ether. Is another name for it? I'm not sure. Is that the two words? I can't remember. Um, so you might see this referred to as dimethyl ether. Right. Sound okay? They're pretty easy to name, though, right? You just should remember that oxy. And this is more likely to show up, not as an organic chemistry question per se, but say you had a question about Lewis dot diagrams or a question about intermolecular forces. They sometimes use different types of organic molecules, different classes of organic substances to have you talk about those. So it's just helpful if you can recognize them. So let's go on and do just a couple of examples of how to name some ethers so we have a little bit more practice. <coughs> All right. So here's a nice ether. Now, this is a symmetrical ether because it's got the same thing on both sides. How many carbons on the left? Two. two. And if you have two carbons, what's your prefix? F. F. And how many carbons on the right? Two. two. All right. So, what is the name of this going to be? Uh, how about? Ethyloxy, I think. Not quite. Not ethyl oxy. Just. Oh. Ethoxy. All right, so this is ethoxy ethane. All right. But you may also see this referred to as diethyl ether. That's another name that's sometimes used for the ethers. All right. All right. Now let's look at this second ether. All right. Now in this case, it's asymmetrical. I have different things on each side. 
We want the alkane part of the name to be the longest part. Remember we always name them based on the longest continuous chain? Mm -hmm. All right. So the longest continuous chain in this case is again ethane. And on the other side, how many carbons? One. So what's the name of it? Methoxyethane. Methoxyethane, that's right. So it's very systematic and very logical. And I just want to do this as an overview so that when you go on and take organic chemistry in college, because if you're thinking of a biology or chemistry or pre-med or nursing, you're going to take a lot of chemistry. All right? Um, so you'll spend a year with the organic chemistry textbook. David. So is the prefix usually the shortest chain? Yeah, so the, the alkoxy part is the shorter chain. And uh, then the... The part that ends in ane is the longer chain. All right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sound okay? Now, if we were to name this in the other system, right, um, you do it in alphabetical order, so it would be ethyl methyl ether. So I thought it was alphabetical always order, but we don't have to know that system. All right. And if you have more than one ether linkage, which sometimes happens, then there's all these other sets of rules that we don't have to worry about that. I just want you to, f to focus on recognizing the ether linkage, carbon, oxygen, carbon. Okay, and that's really what we need to do.